Good morning, good morning. I sound croaky already, that's not a great start, is it? How are you today? Happy Thursday. It is half ten. This is our regular coffee catch up, and I am delighted to be with you. It feels like a little while since we've done this, and I don't know why because um, it's just been a week, totally normal week. Children back at school, so mine have now done um, a full week. They went back on Wednesday last week. And my youngest this morning has had his first little wobble and he was very upset putting his uniform on and said, I don't want to go, mummy. And when I explored it a little bit more, I said, well, why? What, what is it? It's, um, <laughs> he said, I don't like sitting still. I don't like sitting still. And the morning lasts a million hours. Morning, Pauline. Yeah, apparently the morning is a million hours because he has to sit and do maths. And then the afternoon is another million hours because he has to sit and do something else, which... Um, yeah, uh, it's tough, isn't it? How do you respond to that when you're like, well, you've only got a few years ahead of you, mate. You'll be fine. So, yeah, he wasn't he wasn't skipping in quite so much today, but um, I'm sure he'll get into a better routine and we'll be we'll be back to it. But, um, yeah, it just feels like we're, we're kind of turning the corner, doesn't it, now? It's getting darker in the evenings and, yeah, it is autumn, but I like autumn. I like autumn. I like the colours and I like the weather, so I'm not going to complain. So, today... We are talking about getting out of our own way. Now, this came up from, uh, I think, Deborah, this was one of your suggestions, but there's lots of different ways that people sort of describe this topic. Um, and I guess for, for that reason, we might as well just clarify what it is we mean before we kick off. So before I start, if you're watching this for the first time, this is one of your first coffee chats. This is where I am exactly right here every Thursday morning at half past 10. I have a tea. I called it coffee catch up just because the alliteration, tea, tea and tea and nothing rhymes with tea. But I have my tea. I hope you have a drink. Um, so I'm here just to share some thoughts with you. It might be uh, suggestions like this one is that people have made, and I think I've probably got another four or five weeks of stuff that people have um, suggested we talk about. But also it might be something that's going on in my business. It might be something that's just come up for me generally, and I will share some wisdom with you. It's brilliant if you're on live because you can ask questions, you can interact and I will respond. If you're not and you're watching on replay and you still want to ask a question because it's some, prompted something as you're going through it, I will still see them all and I will do my utmost to reply. Okay, so let's talk about this getting in your own way thing. What does this mean? You're having a facial. Oh my goodness, that is multitasking. That's amazing, Pauline. Very jealous, actually. I'm going to the hairdressers this afternoon after I finish this. So, um, yeah, I'm quite looking forward to that. Just Mind you, I've got to wear a mask now. I've got to wear, yeah, like a full-on, while well, they're wearing masks and I've got to wear a mask, which is going to be a bit interesting, isn't it? I mean, like your hair wash and all the stuff in your hair while, you, while you've got a mask on. But anyway, okay, so getting in your own way, what do we mean by that? So we mean knowing that you are preventing yourself moving forward. We mean that that sort of conflicting voice in your mind that says, I know I need to do this to move forward. But then you've got another voice saying, yeah, yeah, but you don't really want to do that, do you? Or why don't you just do this instead? Or, well, that doesn't sound like it's going to be successful. Why don't you do this? And it, it's, it's that constant conflict of, you know, in your heart of hearts that actually this is something that you desire. It's something that you want. It's something that you want to push yourself to do. But then you've got this kind of pull constantly bringing you back going, oh, no, you're not going to be able to do that. Or that's a rubbish idea. No one wants to hear from you. And all of that negativity that comes through. And then we end up almost crippled by this, this constant conflict in our own minds. So we don't take the action. And the more that goes on, the more frustrated we become with the fact that we are literally getting in our own way. We're not moving ourselves into a place where we feel we're behaving in a way that's going to make us successful and that means something different to absolutely everyone so what is it why why is it why do we do this so for me the majority of this and it's not all of it the majority of it is your self-protection self-preservation element it's the ego it's the it's the gremlins but actually describing them in that way makes them sound really negative it's they're not there for that reason. So let's go way back in time when we all lived in caves. We we had a, a predominant um, requirement to keep ourselves safe. We had to go
go and forage for food, we had to survive and we had to procreate. That was kind of it, wasn't it? So we've developed these safety mechanisms within, within ourselves that said, well, we know that that's safe there because we've done that before, we've experienced what that means, so we're gonna do that again. However, over here, this scary stuff, we've not done this before. We've not been there before. We've not ventured beyond that particular crop of trees. So we don't know what's beyond there. So let's not do that because there's probably something dangerous through there. We'll stick with what we know. And this has stayed with us throughout evolution. But let's be clear, what we're probably not looking to try and do is go into uh, like a wilderness and attempt to kill a woolly mammoth. However, all of this stuff is still within us. These safety mechanisms have actually become, become more and more complex as we've evolved. So these safety mechanisms are much more emotional based now. They're not about physical. So yeah, we'll all have that physical thing where you perhaps got a fear of walking next to a precipice because you think you're going to fall over it. But predominantly, we live our lives in a pretty safe way. So the, the safety mechanism has now switched to our emotional well-being. And it's switched to our, well, how do we generally feel? And it's associated with any level of fear. So any level of fear that kicks off the chemical reaction in your body and it actually releases um, cortisol, I think it's called. Once you're kicking cortisol off, your body starts reacting physically, all, all sorts of ways. Your brain reacts, your muscles react, and it's, it's sort of that, that beginning of the fight or flight. Now, our bodies do not like that. It's kind of like, a oh, that's, that's a bit of a, mm, it's, like a it's like a kickstart. You know, it's one of those machines that goes ka-chunk onto you and just fires you up. And our bodies don't like that. So if you're looking to do something, anything, be it jump out of an aeroplane with a parachute, be it do a Facebook Live, whatever it is that kicks off those chemical reactions in your body, we will attempt to prevent doing it because our safety mechanisms and all of those, those keep you safe things kick off and go, well, you shouldn't probably be doing that because look what happens when you do. And it starts to create all of these potential scenarios that you're then listening to and going, yeah, actually, you're right. It does sound a bit, mm, I'll probably not. Yeah, brilliant. The ego is one, the safety mechanisms is one, and you're back into your comfort zone, your safety zone, which has its purpose, as I say. Absolutely, cortisol is very dangerous. Hi, Deborah. I'm pleased to see you are on because obviously this is your topic. Um, little bits of cortisol, really good because they kick you into action a lot of the time. They can, like, they can kind of get the heart rate going. Little bits, small, small and infrequent are good, but yeah, absolutely. Having that surging around your body for any, any length of time is not no good for anybody. So knowing that in terms of a factual approach is one thing, but I, I find that when I know that this is all just chemical stuff going on in my body, it somehow lets me rationalize it a little bit more and it lets me go, yeah, you need to probably get over that because that's just ridiculous. I'm not at risk. I'm not about to jump out of a plane with no parachute. I'm talking about making a decision about my business. I'm talking about pushing myself on. I'm talking about going live, doing a video, posting on social media. This is genuinely not stuff that is going to truly put you at risk. But we have to start managing some of those reactions and some of those chemicals. Now, the way that it can show up on a lower level, so rather than that kind of crippling, I'm not doing that, that, that's kind of the extreme. The other ways that it can show up is much more subtle and it shows up in things like procrastination. So instead of going, oh my goodness, that's a fear thing, the, the self-preservation and the safety mechanism have got really clever. So they'll say, okay, so don't do that thing. Instead, why don't you do this? Why don't you go down this route? Because that's close enough to something we've done before, we've experienced that and, and you, can, you can do some really good work in that. And there's so many things. I think I've done a, a coffee chat before on a, the whole list of potential um, ways that we can self-sabotage in terms of the, the, the sort of things we can do to, to procrastinate. And there is, there's a mass of them, be it um, just kind of time sapping things. Like I'll sort that out. I'll retrain on that. I'll get all my admin done. I'll this, I'll this. On a daily basis, there's a whole heap of stuff. And that's a separate discussion. But if you know that there's things that you're doing that are sitting on your list over and above the stuff that you really know you need to do, then you're probably slipping into some procrastination. But 
put it into that box of I know why I'm procrastinating because ultimately this is it's based in fear I'm concerned I'm not I don't feel confident doing that thing I have an element of concern about that thing whatever it is and all of those different levels in between when you've got that doubt when you've got that lack of certainty that well if I knew for sure that if I did this thing here it would result in this thing here and this is the result that I want then surely we would do it. But it's the doubt that pulls us down, isn't it? It's that, yeah, but what if it doesn't work? And then I'll have put myself through it for what? But unfortunately, we can never have that, that surety. In so few things, is there that 100% surety? So instead, we've got to almost convince ourselves. We've got to create that surety for ourselves. Now, the surety might not be, this is going to work. Like, this is the tried and tested formula. I'm going to nail it. But instead of going to that extreme, why not go to the, okay, so it might not like work 100, 100% and get me 75 customers, but actually it might not be that bad. You know, you can scale it back down, can't you? That it might not go terribly. It might not be an absolute hideous experience. It might be okay. And sometimes that's enough. And, and this can apply to anything, be it action you're looking to take, be it steps you're wanting to to move yourself on with saying to yourself okay so I'm embracing the fact that it's not going to be amazing but it might not just just for a moment letting yourself go it might not be that bad and that's a really different approach to anything that feels new as opposed to well it's all just going to be awful and I'm just going to have to grit my teeth and get through it trying to change that inner voice trying to change the story that you've got going on in your mind can just slightly shift you if anyone has got anything that you do be it in any walk of life to get you to that point of oh, it's just about bearable share it in the comments because it's it's often interesting some of the mechanisms we've subconsciously built for ourselves in in all sorts of things to share them because I, I i love i love hearing how people have, have built these in so for me this is totally non-work related i um i have it sounds ridiculous to admit this as an adult but I, I, it is true i have quite a big problem with a dentist and um it was born from quite a lot of dentistry in my past which wasn't particularly pleasant and then i had wisdom teeth out in the dentist chair which i never should have done and now as an adult I, my teeth are really good and i very rarely need anything doing but i get huge anxieties going to the dentist so i actually take the the opposite approach of, of i kind of tell myself it's going to be awful it's just going to be uncomfortable and hideous but it's one of those things I have to do otherwise next time I go it'll be even worse and even worse so that when I go it's actually of course never as bad as I think and and I always feel for the dentist because I walk in quite kind of pale and slightly clammy and she's like you okay yeah I'm good I'm good and within about two or three minutes she's relaxed me I've relaxed and it's it's fine so then I walk out and going oh it was nowhere near as bad so I go to the opposite extreme but there's there's a line, isn't there, between if I'd actually built myself up to, to absolute extreme, I would possibly walk out of the reception. So it's that fine line of, of how do you find those coping mechanisms to, to be able to do what you need to do, but still make it more manageable. The other thing as well is totally blagging it, like like behaving in a way that it's fine to then end up going oh actually it is fine so I did this with flying I went through a period of time where I was a very nervous flyer and would get that sort of anxiety on takeoff um, and landing and as soon as I had my children and we started flying with them I didn't want them to, to pick up on even a second of that and I'm literally I've got my little one on on my knee so I sort of had nowhere to go with 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 my anxiety levels and I had to fake it, so I had to literally sit, oh, look out the window, look at all this, isn't it amazing? Oh, can we, have we taken off yet? And suddenly, the more we did it, actually the faking it became true, and I, and I sort of realised, I'm more like, actually, I didn't get that sort of fast breathing and the heart pounding thing. It, it has moved on because I was faking it so they didn't see it. So that that's another kind of coping mechanism that I, that I created, but... It's, it's interesting to sort of see where we do this in other parts of our lives because we are one life, be it your business, be it your personal life, be it experience, you know, whatever. We are one person. So if you can bring something that you're doing elsewhere that you find is a good coping mechanism, you can bring it into, into your business. Um, so let me see, let's see what you've said to me. The thing that springs to mind for me is switching my mindset to I'm doing this for other people. It's not about me. Oh, yeah, I like that. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's um, I I was having a conversation with someone recently about um, I think it was particularly focused around like channeling our message and and the whole going live thing, making yourself visible, putting yourself out there, trying to reach your clients, and all all, all sort of based around that. And the discussion that I had with her was actually people who you're looking to try and serve it's not about you it's about what it is you're going to do to help them and it's about being able to share your expertise not about you as a person so almost like you're the mouthpiece you are the channel by which you're delivering your service your product your gift your experience your your the help that you're going to provide people and look suddenly looking at it in that way and then not doing that suddenly becomes really selfish, you know, in the absolute extreme. Like, it'd be, it'd be like somebody that's just got the most amazing, say they're, they're a healer and they can literally, I'm not sure I believe in any of this stuff, but, you know, these people that kind of lay their hands on and then amazingly they walk. If you're subscribing to any of that, well, if that, if that person didn't do it because they felt a bit shy or they felt a bit judged, look at all those people that would, they wouldn't be, be affected. And, and it's the same for us on any level, isn't it? If we didn't take our message out, then how's anyone supposed to be receiving the help from us? Showing up is serving your people and showing up allows you to help and make a difference to those, those that you can. On, what, on whatever level it is, you help them. Um, oh, well, I mean, yeah, same. Same, Deborah. Yeah, I'm quite concerned about going back to flying, you know, because we haven't, I haven't flown now since October last year. We normally fly four times a year. And... Um, we don't have anything in the pipeline at all. Like we're not, we're, we're happy not flying at the moment. I'm not, I'm not in a rush to get back to it, but I'm going to be interested to see how I am when I go back on a plane because my children are a lot older now. And um, yeah, there's no reason for me to particularly kind of fake the thing for them. So I'm going to have to give that some quite serious thought once I get back into a plane, particularly with everything else kind of surrounding the situation of, um, yeah, all the, all the additional steps. So yeah, be, be, be a bit interesting. I like, I'm really looking forward to, to going getting there being somewhere else but not perhaps the flying bit but we'll see okay so what have we talked about um the fact that it's a safety mechanism so checking in on the fact that it's okay that it's there it's keeping you safe getting in your own way is to stop you from put, putting yourself in a position where that fear reaction that physical reaction to fear kicks in so rationalizing it in that way says to yourself it says to your mind it says to the the very clever thing up here it's okay. It's fine that it's there. I know why it's there. And now what am I going to do about it? So we've talked about that. We've talked about how it can show up, which is things like procrastination, avoiding the situation and this massive doubt. And if, this is where some of the imposter syndrome stuff kicks in as well. The, you can't do that because you don't know what you're talking about. You wouldn't be able to this because, because, because you're going to get judged. People are going to expose you, all of that stuff. Again, separate live on imposter syndrome. So what can we do instead? Because surely that is the key. So we've talked about having some coping mechanisms and we've we've kind of highlighted to ourselves that actually there are other ways that we can we can bring in some coping mechanisms from outside of our business into what we're doing as a business. But there is there's four main ways I want to talk you through. I'm just going to slurp my tea. I hope it's not too hot. Can you see the steam? My kids this morning on the way to school, because it was it was only about eight degrees this morning when we went out and they were doing the whole, <laughs> you know, you have to do when you're a child, <laughs> see your breath. So that's, that is, that is how I'm autumnal, it's feeling. Right, four things then that we can start to put in place straight away to start concentrating on the positives as opposed to I'm constantly getting in my own way and this is now a problem. Number one, this is your biggie creating a clear vision of where you want to be. So by that, I mean not just, well, by the end of this month, I want to have this, or by the end of this year, I want to be this. This is your big stuff. This is the stuff that when you when you sit and you think about it, it feels unfeasible right now because you're sat in your whatever space it is at the moment going, oh, as if I'm going to be able to ever own a house on the beach or have a, have a house in the mountains or a six bedroom detached house in blah 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 whatever it is your dream whatever it is creating that vision with as much clarity as you can possibly give it is like the top of your tree because if you haven't done that all that's happening is you're staying kind of down here in this fear 
stopping you moving on, fear stopping you moving on. And, and you, you're also not giving yourself a reason to change. If you're giving yourself a reason to change, to actually get up towards that vision, then suddenly it becomes, there's a reason behind this. Like, I'm not just doing this to make myself feel uncomfortable. I'm not just doing this because I've, I'm some kind of sadist where I'm just wanting to kick off all of these, these emotions and this doubt for the fun of it. I'm doing it for this thing. So having a vision that is more than your money, it, it has to be something that your money will possibly enable, but actually it might not even be money related. It might be that you want more flexibility, that you want more freedom, that you want to just have enough that you can pay your essential stuff, but actually just have time with your family to be able to gift to family, friends, whatever it is, your vision is so personal to you. But the more detail you've got in your vision, the more it becomes real and the more that you start to create the steps between now and where you are to having that vision. Now, there's all sorts of things you can do to start to add some detail to your vision. And if, if you're not an imaginative person or if there's something going on in your world that is stopping you creating that vision, then that's your starting point. Now, that can be a million and one things. That might be the doubt. It might be just the, I don't know where to start. It might be that you're really super practical and you're very um, kind of action-based. So you're thinking, well, what is the point of all this dreaming rubbish? Because that's just pie in the sky and it depresses me. This was me, by the way. It depresses me to try and think of this stuff up here. When look, here is where I am now. I just need some steady flow of clients. Being able to create that vision and almost just just kind of divorce yourself from your current daily life and sit and dream is so powerful. I've got a quote over here, which is on my board permanently. And it says, your life will be no better than the plans you make and the actions you take. You are the architect and the builder of your own life, fortune and destiny. I might type that in. I love it. That's apparently Alfred Montepert. Don't know who he is, but I love that quote. You'll only be as good as the plans you can make and the actions that you're you're then going to take from it. So start start simply. Start with just a day in the life. How do you want your day in the life to be? Ultimately, in your vision, that was the easiest way I could access that. Where do I want to wake up? What's my house like? What routine am I going to have through my day? What does um what does my week look like? You know, how do I this? How do I this? And actually just sitting and, and starting with that and then suddenly you can, each time you do it, you can add a bit more. So actually um, there's flowers in every room and I can smell the flowers, they're amazing. Um, I can, I, I, I'm going to open the door on the morning and someone's picked the kids up to take them to school. That would be a pleasure because I, I, this is a real pain in the bum taking the kids to school. Um, I can choose what I do for the first couple of hours of the day. I can work, ha have an amazing time with the clients that I work with and seeing them transform their lives. And all of these things that, that kind of kick into my ideal day. That's where I started. So that is your first, you need to work on your vision. Once you've got your vision in place, the second step is starting to create some goals that are gonna get you there. Now these are your tiny stepping stones and you might have a hundred stepping stones between now and your vision but you've got to start with those initial goals. So where do you want to get to by the end of September? Where do you want to get to by October? Christmas, what do you want to be doing by Christmas? Set that as a goal first, but don't worry about how you're going to do it because that will come. And all too often, when we're setting a goal, our brains go in, mm, not sure you're going to be able to do that. So why don't you rein it back a bit and make it really feasible? It's about those stretching things, those things that are going to really push you. And I, um, I think I've shared this before, but I've, um, I've recently come across this phrase of, around the goal thing as well. And I love it. it this, this, to me, made the whole goal setting thing just crystallise in my mind. Setting a goal is not about achieving it. It's not about, oh, I've done it, I've ticked it off, because that's just a to-do list. And I love a to-do list. I love ticking them off. Setting a true goal that is going to stretch you is all about the person you become in the pursuit of your goal. So I'll say that again. The person you become 
in the pursuit of your goal. Because the person sat here today listening to me right now is not the same person that's living in that vision. Of course they're you. I'm using the superhero analogy. If you're Tony Stark right now, then the person who's in your ultimate vision is Iron Man. It's like you, but with a whole load of extra stuff. It's you acting in a very slightly different way. It's behaving in a different way. It's leaving those limiting beliefs at the door and moving yourself forward. So it's, it's you, but like a bigger you. So we're talking about trying to create a goal that will actually ultimately push you to become something different now and bringing that to, to now because you know that ultimately behaving in that way is going to get you towards that goal. Now, the goal might be small. They might be small to begin with, but I don't want you to already know how you're going to achieve them. That, there's no point. That's not a goal. That is a to-do. That's, that's just an action list. A goal is something that you don't know how you're going to get to. You don't know how you're going to achieve it when you write it down. So that's number two. Create your vision, then you create your goals from there. And they're going to be much more short term. They might be, right, by the end of September this, by the end of October this. The third one, and this is where... I guess the secret weapon is that people all the time miss out. Nobody's commented for a while. Let me know if this is making sense. Is this, has anyone gone, oh yeah, um, stay with me. Third one is working on yourself. So what does that mean? Because working on yourself can mean different things to different people. But working on yourself in this context, in order to get out of your way, for me, means being able to really, truly be honest with yourself about what might be holding you back. And exploring that in a almost a detached way. So if if you're working with somebody, so if you, if, if I'm working with someone who has got stuff that is is clearly holding them back, then my job as, as their coach is to to tease that out and to explore both why it's there and what they can do to try and either leave it behind, attempt to resolve it work it through so, so that it's no longer a blocker. Now, doing it with, with an external person is in, in many ways slightly more simple, but you can still do this to a point on your own. Knowing what is there, knowing what you're bringing with you that that is kicking off some of these, these fears, these don't do that, do that instead, or yeah, you, there's no point in you doing that. Working on yourself is where you're going to lead this stuff. Because you can, you can take the actions, you can do the steps, you can go, right, okay, I'm doing this now, I'm going to have my vision, I'm going to have my goals, I'm going to push on, push on. But it eventually will just feel like you're, you're kind of banging heads with yourself and it will only get you so far. Ultimately, you want to leave that stuff where it needs to be, which is probably in your past. You need to work it through and develop yourself so that you're ready to change. Because remember we said... By pursuing your goal, you're going to change. You're going to have to alter the way that you, the way that you take action, the way that you feel about yourself, and the the confidence you've got in your ability to achieve these things. So if if the stuff it within you now that's holding you back from feeling like that, then that's what needs to be resolved for, first. Not going and doing another six free courses and doing this and then taking this action and working 12 hours a day every single day just to push 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 actually just taking some time to go okay I'm gonna have some time out because I'm gonna go and have you know half a day just thinking about this I'm gonna have a day thinking about my planning I'm gonna have a day thinking about my vision I'm gonna this I'm gonna this I'm gonna this working on yourself particularly if there's blockers there is far more effective than just pushing, 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 because there is always going to be a friction and, and it, it becomes exhausting after a while. Okay, final one, which for me is, is like the icing on the cake once you've got those previous three. The final one is reflection and celebrating. So all too often when we're in, in our business, we're in a very aggressive quite a masculine energy a lot of the time and we tend to like be head down and kind of pushing on in that sort of yes I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this so this is very much linked with the previous point that actually taking the time to go where am I where is my business how well am I progressing how how has this taken me forward who am I now 
compared to the person that I was six months ago, a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, however long it was. And taking that time to truly reflect on how you are progressing is so powerful because it reminds your brain that actually you are on this progressive journey and you're not just kind of pushing and fighting all the time. Celebrating your successes, big and small, is a big, big, biggie in my world. And when we do the group coaching, I always want to hear about people's wins. And it it slightly frustrates me if anyone's like, oh, I haven't really got any this week. You've always got some. Everyone has always got some wins. Even if they're like, you've managed to send a parcel that's been sat on your to-do list forever. There is always wins. And celebrating those gets you into that habit of feeling good about the things that you achieve. Deborah, I know you like to open a bottle of bubbly for your wins, and I'm sure I'm assuming they're probably your bigger ones. But knowing that you can celebrate, and it's it's good to celebrate when you've maybe hit one of the goals that you set for yourself. Set some time aside to say, yes, I'm reflecting. I know that I've done a great job, and you know the celebration doesn't have to be massive. The celebration just might be going and meeting a friend for a coffee and sharing your good news with them. It might be awarding yourself a night off I nearly said night out but we're not supposed to do that now are we um but you know whatever feels good for you that allows you to celebrate and having that period of reflection so how do I feel now compared to how I felt then or did that win that I've just celebrated come more easily maybe than my previous example of that and being able to really really appreciate where you are right now in comparison there is a huge shift in you, without a doubt. There will always be because we are always moving ourselves on, even though we're having setbacks. And uh, I've talked before about the rhythm of, of your development is off quite often, like a push and then a retract, a bit like the, the, the waves, that it's a push and a retract. But you never go back as far as you, to where you were already. It's a, it's a push and a not quite back, a push and a go, go back. And that's very natural. But even so, that reflective period of, yes, but I'm still further on than I was. I'm still in a better place than I was. Look what I've achieved. Look how far I've got. And giving yourself that massive pat on the back and actually say, why, why am I worrying about getting out of my own way? I have got out of my own way because look at this, this and this. So does this make sense? If anyone has any questions, please type them in. Uh, so let me summarise again what, what we've talked about. So getting in your own way is principally a reaction to keeping you safe. It is a way of being able to tell you to stay in your zone of familiarity, in your comfort zone, in your, well, do that because you know the outcome will be that, all of that. And when you're pushing yourself forward and you're moving your business to, to something, you're, you may be venturing into stuff you've never, ever done before. It is scary. It's really scary. And there'll be times when it gets to the point where that safety mechanism, it even goes well, what are you even doing? Why don't you just go back and do the previous thing that you did? So that's all natural and it's all fine to feel like, like that. So understanding that actually it's a, it's there for a reason. It's kicking off a physical reaction in you when you, um, when you spark some level of fear, any level of fear will start that chemical reaction, which then kicks off other things in your body. We don't want to sustain that because, as Deborah said, it's not healthy to have too much cortisol in your in your body for too long. But actually knowing it's there somehow rationalises it for us. We talked about the fact that procrastination is a great example of how it can turn up. So it's perhaps on a lesser level than that out and out crippling fear. But diverting your energies into something else and being distracted off into doing something else is a really good, um, clever way of, it's not good, it's a clever way of your safety mechanisms trying to keep you in that place, keep you safe. So instead, four things, I'll put this at the top. Create a clear vision. You've got to know why you're doing this stuff. Otherwise, what is the point? You know, why bother if, you're, if you don't know what you're working towards? If you're just literally head down, going from day to day to day to day, where, where's the push? Where is that goal that you're ultimately looking to get to? So create a really clear vision and keep going back to it because it should be fun. It should be like, Having a little daydream like when you were a kid. Oh, what shall I this? What shall I? Oh, and imagine this and imagine that. Create your vision and keep working on your vision. Then create some goals that are going to push you towards getting to your vision. Work on yourself because if you're just push, 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 push all the time without reflecting, without 
working on some of the stuff which is, is, is deep-seated within you and might be holding your back, you will only ever get so far. And then the final one, go through that process of celebrating and reflecting how far you genuinely have come. And almost have it like as a diary thing, like every month, go, okay, look, turn of the month's a great point. Right, look, it's the first of the month. Okay, it's first of September. Look where I was at the first of August. Now, for, for me, at first not quite, but ish, I, we were still in the thick of the kids being at home and it was chaos and, you know, we didn't know whether or not we were going to get much work done every day. And then, like, September comes, bang, totally different. And again, if you go back even further, it does it again. So then by the 1st of October, I know that it'll be a different place again because of all this stuff that will have happened during September. And then celebrate those wins. Any final questions? Has that... Deborah particularly, I think you've said yes, but that has that helped? Um, as I say, I'll pop up those uh, comments in the top with the four steps in as a summary, but um, the comments are a bit slow because I've seen a couple come up. I'm slow when I'm waiting. Deborah, I think you're away, aren't you, this week? Enjoying some little bit of break somewhere. No, either the comments are going to come up or they're going to be really super slow. So I will leave you to go and have your Thursday. Um, that's been fun to do. And, you know, I think it's one that it's good to address. Yes, it has good. Um, if we don't address it, it's just going to exhaust us because it is, it's like it's trying to push a car when you've got the handbrake on. You can just about, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's going to ever be easy, does it? Um, dealing with it rather than ignoring it is absolutely the best way rather than no it's fine it's fine it's fine I'm gonna just push 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 because that energy is exhausting and it will it will it will literally burn you out but dealing with it why am I being held back what's going on what else is going on what else is going on yeah but yeah but yeah but and keep challenging yourself to really dig as deep as you can in it that's where you're going to free it and be able to move on with a lot more you have to push yourself. Just do it. Yes, you do. You do to a point. Absolutely. Um, and, and yeah, you will find that then each time you do push a little bit further, it doesn't feel quite so hard. It doesn't feel quite so scary. Right. I shall go and let you have the rest of your Thursday. Enjoy, everybody. And I will see you really, really soon. All right. Go and enjoy. Bye. Bye.